everybody, it's August 9th, Wednesday, and you're here at the Chaos Community DEI Working Group, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group. Um, just a quick reminder for everybody, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so please keep that in mind as you interact here with us. You um, are welcome to keep your cameras off, put them on, whatever you want. We're, we're easy here. Um, you're welcome to chat with us on the side, or if you have the floating box, which I learned not everybody has chat on the side of their Zoom window. Sometimes it's floating. I don't know why. Um, that was new news to me. So wherever your chat is, you can uh, just interact with us there if you like. And yeah, I'm really happy to see everybody. I hope everyone's having a good day. I'm going to share here. I just mentioned at the outset, I, I do have a Moodle update when we get to that. Oh, good. Okay, I'm just going to drop it in here. Okay, cool. Um, if you've not added your name here to the agenda, please feel free to do so if you like. You don't have to, or if you don't want to, but I'm doing better this day than I was this time last week. I think I was feeling very stressed last week, so I feel better today. That's good. Finally, I was able to sleep. I think that's the, that's the, the key. Is you, so you just get so exhausted that you have to sleep. Yeah, that's my strategy for sleeping. Um, okay, let's jump right into it. I did not put this on here, so someone else did, and I would love for that person to take the reins. Take so that's me. This is a conversation that we've kind of been having about updating the DEI.md file to include a, a little bit more with respect to project access, at least for now, um, just as one of the four metrics in the DEI.md file. I think the the um, the thought was, was that the suggested ways that projects could talk about the different metrics in the DEI.md file, those, those, the suggestions that we provided were kind of chaos centric suggestions, which is not surprising because they were, were written, chaos. they were written in the chaos project. So, um, so uh, I think Daniel, you had provided some additional feedback here, and that's what this is. And so I'm just bringing it to the group here to show what those one through five could be. Uh, the ones I had were for the inclusive leadership. Um, well, they were category. Can I add those to to the agenda or yeah. uh, link to the discussion? Or I, I'll do both. Um, yeah. In fact, I'm going to just straight up add this issue because anyone that's not familiar could. Oh, I'm trying to get out of the screen share now. Great. <laughs> um, right. uh, Is that better? Do you want to do you want to share? Um, I'm good. No, sorry. I had the multiple screens going and I got stuck. Um, but I'm going to just paste from. I'm just going to start from the bottom here to start. It's not liking that. Um, this is the GitLab issue on collaboration for the DEI file, in case anyone doesn't have that. And then I'm going to add in specifically, and Matt and I, we're kind of going back and forth on um, this. I think I'm just going to do the latest version that Matt had for inclusive leadership and paste that in. Let's just do it like... Um, Someone who's better at Google Docs can also help me with formatting if it's a mess, but um, uh, that's good enough. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> You're good. I think you'll you'll get the gist. And that was um, things that were added in a, in addition. Um, and I, I think that's actually inclusive of everything we had was originally in there, plus what was being suggested to add for that category. So again, these are thanks, um, Daniel. I was just going to say these are. Um, these are just as a reminder for people, just suggestions on ways that projects could report how they're attending to the different metrics. So they're not requirements. Yeah, I think that's one of the questions I have is like, how will like will will a project be aware of this as a suggestion and not a requirement? Like, is that going to be clear? Um, maybe in the wording of the of the template file just so that I it's like very it's, clear i i think it's clear i think it's clear 
<laughs> but we could really ensure that it's clear in the dei.md file. I mean, we have like a sentence that says, you know, possible, possible ways you could do this or suggestions include. The only reason we added them is for a while, we just had the dei.md file with the list of the four metrics. And it just looked kind of sparse. <laughs> Like, it, like think people would kind of look at this and be like, now what do I do? And so that's why they were included. And then my next question would be, um, I know you mentioned the um, the burnout as another uh, possible like next iteration for a next metric. Yep. Um, are you looking for feedback and like new suggestions for specifically for burnout or for any of the existing four? Like what should my focus area be on for working well, on next? Yeah, I think maybe the, the the discussion would be what are the next two metrics we would like to include in, in the silver level badging? And the only reason that I had mentioned burnout, I think in that in that thread was that um was that it was originally a metric that we were using in the bronze badging but it ended up getting moved like just kind of pushed back and i think the pushback um, was to silver level so it was kind of hard to measure in bronze a little too early in the game i think but we thought yeah i think you're right and so i guess the question would be as we move to the silver level what might those be what might those two metrics be and then from there, once we land on burnout, then I think we would come up with, you know, what are suggestions as ways, kind of that suggested list that we've been doing here. And one of the considerations, at this, maybe at the silver level, maybe at gold, is there, there needs to be some metric that shows evidence the project's engagement with contributors is growing. So you can't really claim to be increasing or advancing your project's diversity, equity, and inclusion if the same three people continue to be the only contributors. At least that that would be the that seems to, to me that's the sort of face validity. It's a face validity thing. Like how can you be getting more diverse with the same three people? Question for you, Sean, is that, for that metric, is that just um, like a, a metric for engagement of contributors, like total contributors to a project, or is there a breakdown of demographics for, for that as well, or, or how is that approached? So I think there, I think some kind of breakdown of demographics is appropriate at some level, but I think it's like, a, you don't even need to go into the demographic graphics if it's the same three people. Like you don't need to go that far, um, but as as contributors grow, if we if we see growth, then it might be gold or platinum. I, that's a discussion that we need to have about about when we actually look for diversity in the contributor community in some sort of specific way, or at least have ask the maintainers who submit the DEI.MD to talk about it. I will say in the event badging, we don't we don't require a specific level of diversity or anything like that. We just ask the uh, event organizers how they're attending to it. So I would imagine that we would take the same approach um, where we're not going to require any kind of numbers, but we're just going to ask how they're measuring, how they're attending to it, how they think about demographics, how they how they um, center it in their project. Yeah, so, upon, uh, upon further review, I, I, I agree with that. We don't want to become the evaluator. Yeah. We want to become the encourager of practices that increase diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah, that, that's kind of been my approach, too. And, um, and on one side of, like, not only the, the demographics not being the, a number focus, at least for GitLab, because um, we want to make sure it's actually improving the experience for contributors, not just the numbers. Um, and then another part of it, too, is like any, how do you actually survey demographics or get a number? Um, and like there's some legal issues there, too, with any like questions being asked 
best for your community contributors. So that's kind of what's that's my, one of my questions here was, would that be a requirement for like having a breakdown or is it just seeing those numbers and what is a, what is a project doing to try to increase uh, diversity efforts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm aligned with that. Yeah, because this is really about um, a project self-reflection and, you know, them answering questions that maybe they've not asked themselves before. So really, you know, thinking about those things. And, and um, I think also, too, just as an aside, I think as we go and, um, you know, more and more projects think about this DEI.md file, being able to see what other projects are doing, I think will be super helpful for the whole community. So um, I don't, I'm not sure, like this is a totally separate conversation. Sorry, I digress. But I feel like there's some space there for us, whoever, I, I don't have any chaos necessarily, but um, for someone to maybe aggregate or, or, you know, look at those different things that people are doing and um, maybe analyze what's more uh, effective or I don't know. But I think that that is, is going to be a side benefit to this whole thing is that people are going to be able to see what other projects are doing. That's totally unrelated. Sorry to <laughs> what we're talking about, I know. But um, yeah, just made me think of that. No, that, that's a great point. And the way I've been thinking about it is rather than just focusing on like the template file as like, you know, like a framework, um, I'd be most interested in seeing what actual projects have as their file, because to me, it's like the real world examples. Yeah. Um, you know, once a number of projects have those to then sort of like look at a spectrum of of those and see like what is and finding out what's working and what's not and what other projects are trying. So I'm really interested in that. Yeah, because we've seen that in our DEI event badging, because everything's all those issues are all open, anybody can see. So anybody who's running an event can go and see what, like, what is the Linux Foundation project or events and what are they doing about XYZ? Or what are, you know, these other folks doing about XYZ? So it's, it's really interesting to see that, um, you know, not only is it helping the projects think about or the events think about what they're doing, but also it gives a resource for others who are maybe wondering what they can do to, to do better. So. Okay, we do have other stuff. Oh, okay. I'm talk about... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Whoever that was, go for it. Okay, sorry, that was rude. So um, I think the current process we are using, I think maybe how that would work is we do have like a page, you know, where we list out the projects that we are badged. I don't know if we're still going to retain that page. I mean, for project badging. So if that page is, um, that page can be somewhere where people can see how, like the projects that have been badged and, you know, how they are describing those documents. But I think the the process for, you know, event badging, um, since the process for event badging and project badging is different, it does make it, you know, the way, the way um, it is on like event budget. So maybe that page can serve as something that people can go and look at to see the projects that have been badged and you know how they are describing those documents or how they are setting things up. Yes, yeah, my understanding that there will be that page um, that serves as that source of truth for um, who has received a badge at least at the beginning until it gets unwieldy, but I think that that was the, that was the idea. So yeah, agreed. One more quick question on this, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Um, is there any, like a live example of a project that has been awarded a badge yet and like a live badge appearing on their project? Like on GitHub? Not yet. We have we are super early in that pilot process. So we're actually looking for projects who want to go through the process. We've talked to, I know one project um, that uh, is working on their DEI.md file, but they haven't finalized it yet, to my knowledge. Um, so yeah, we're super early <laughs> in the process. Okay. Uh, and the reason I ask is because I want to start coordinating with GitLab's um, UX and product teams about like what a badge would look like on like like actually look like and if you had an example yet um just like a mock-up to show um this is just something i'm starting to think about for when we get there oh yeah we have like a graphic do you mean like a graphic example of the badge 
Oh uh, yeah, like a graphic example, and then like where on a project page uh, would it actually appear, like um, like visually on on the page? Yeah, um, we I I can share the graphic example to you on Slack, um, but like on where it will appear, we're talking about people showcasing on like their readme project showcasing on their readme um, file for the badge. Like we, I can share the graphic on Slack. Are you on the Slack? I can. Yeah, yeah, I'm on there. Okay. Yeah, and I think Daniel, we're not really telling people where it goes. I think we're just giving them the code to put in, and then they can put it wherever they want. I think, right? Is that right? <laughs> okay. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the event badge. Mm -hmm. We just say here is the awarded badge. Place it where you need. So, or and it, so that's where we're at right now. But I mean, we could have more discussion on being consistent, like being more specific on where we tell people. We just haven't had that conversation at the moment. Gotcha. So it's more like a badge in their file that they're displaying. Um, yep. Is that what you mean? Okay. Yeah, I was so actually I... talking up for with GitLab of like actually making the badge like appear in the software so that any project could have that kind of display for their for their project. Yeah, we have not had that discussion. Gotcha. Okay, well, we do have other stuff to talk about. Um, are we are we good on project badging for now? Do we? Yeah, this is helpful. I think me, the only thing for me is um, I really appreciated the feedback. If you're right, it was on inclusive leadership, just on how we can make that less chaos centric. And if people have additional comments on the three other metrics that could be, become less chaos centric, um, that'd be great. I you know. All the all advice is welcome advice. Yeah, I'll get back to you, Matt, um, soon with the other the other three. Um, okay. And I'll focus on bronze first before moving on to burnout. Then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That'd be super helpful. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Okay, let's go on. Um, just a reminder, we do have tickets for all things open that we've been awarded um, to chaos. So we have several. <laughs> so if anybody here is interested in going, um, yeah, just let me know. Um, and I will be happy to hook you up with that. Um, we, it does not include travel is the only thing. So you would have to get to Raleigh by yourself. Um, but uh, if we do happen to run out, we can still get tickets at $99. Um, it's a really good conference. A plus recommend if you've never been and you're able to go. Highly recommend. Um, I would just ask if you are going to take advantage of one of the chaos um, badges that you help us out by staffing the chaos booth at some point <laughs> during the conference. Yeah. Um, that would be great. Um, Matt, you did express interest, but I don't know if that was confirmed. I'm gonna, I, yeah, I plan on going. Okay. Yeah. Let me just make sure I rem remember to get you a. Okay, I think I still need to register too. Actually, I don't think. And also register for self. <laughs> I don't think I registered yet. Um, so yeah, anybody else want to um, attend? Just let me know. Uh, this was an action item I had from last week. Just wanted to let everybody know our repo looks pretty good now. Um, we just have these two things, which are actively being worked on, and all the pull requests are cleared, so we're good. So I did my job, yay. <laughs> it's so <laughs> rare that I actually do my action item. It makes me really happy when I do. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the next one is, um, uh, we have a new Badger orientation. If you are interested in being one of our DEI event Badgers, um, you can attend this meeting on August 17th. It, you do not have to know anything about chaos. You do not have to know anything about our metrics or even our badging, our badging efforts. You basically can just come in off the street and attend this meeting. And by the end, you'll be ready to be one of our DEI event badgers. And these people are the ones that look through those applications and manually double check to make sure that the event organizers are in fact doing the things that they say they're doing. Um, or at least they have it posted on their website. We can't really know that they are in fact doing the things, but we can verify that they um, the, the information matches what they're telling us. So um, it's a great way if you're new to chaos, it's a great way to start contributing. 
And again, you don't have to um, really know much about chaos to join. You actually don't even, you're not even committing to anything. Once you go to this meeting, you don't have to register. You can just show up. And, um, and then at the end of the meeting, you can decide if you want to be a Badger um, or not. That's also completely valid. If you just want to learn more about the project, then that's also uh, a place you can do that. So show up here on this um, Zoom link on August 17th at 9 a.m. Central or 3 p.m. West Africa time. Any questions about that? All right. Actually, uh, one question for you. Um, for the event badging, is that just for in-person events or does it cover virtual events as well? Virtual also, yeah. They just have to be about open source technologies or have that as one of the components. That's really, and they have to have a code of conduct. I think those are our two um, just requirements really. But it could be any size, it could be any anywhere, anytime. So yeah, and we do have different metrics for virtual versus the in-person. Some of them overlap, obviously, but there are specific things um, that are for each kind of event. So, um, if you do, anybody wants to be added to that invite just so they don't forget, just let me know. I'm happy to do that too. But yeah, otherwise, you can just show up. And Daniel, I'll make a comment too on the application for the events. It's meant to be a because it's it all occurs in an, an issue that's publicly available, it's meant to be constructive and supportive. So, it's not like you just apply. And then you get a badge or you don't get a badge. It's like um, working with event organizers, you know, like, have you thought about including um, these questions in your registration? And then the event organizers can go back and include the questions, whatever they must say around demographics in their registration, and then come back to the issue. You see what I'm saying? And try to improve the event through the application process. Got it, thanks, that's, that's helpful. Any other questions about um, badgers? Or event badgers anyway, not the badger badgers, the little animals, because I couldn't answer those, but. We can Don, Google it together, I suppose. Can. What's that, Matt? Don, can I answer questions about badgers? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can answer. answer. Uh, yeah, we're the uh, greatest football team in the now, what is it, 16 team Big Ten? Is that your university? Are you the Badgers, Sean? Yeah, the University of Wisconsin. I know Mizzou's the Tigers. We're in the SEC, but my undergrad's from Wisconsin. And I don't know if anybody saw the news last week, total sidebar, but the Pac-12 completely folded and a bunch of two teams moved to the Big Ten. Two teams moved to the Big 12. Three teams moved to the Big 12. Yeah, it's a college football debacle right now. But yes, Badgers, go Badgers. The Big Ten, <laughs> now the Big 16. I can just show people videos of the badgers that hang out in my backyard at night. That's that's those, what I can contribute. Yeah. Okay. The actual animal is a pretty mean ground dwelling creature. It is. <laughs> yeah. But they come at night. They're pretty shy. We don't bother them. They don't bother us. It's all good. That is the key. Don't bother them. They won't bother you. <laughs> they are pretty cute, I will say. Like they, they, just, they just hang out. They snuffle <laughs> around, eat insects. Cute. Cute to try to give him a hug. I would hug. I would <laughs> hug. Yeah, I would hug one. Because they know I'm a friend. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are a friend of the animals. I am. Yes. Okay. Um, so, let's move on to the onboarding course. Um, before you give your update, Sean, I just was wondering if we have any project managers on the call or maybe off the call. Uh, that we can ask for that can help us just kind of organize this and get it get it going um, i know we have project managers here at chaos that um, are looking for ways to contribute and i feel like this is the perfect example of that can just kind of help us you know get a plan in place get us organized get us get us going so i don't know if there's anybody on the call that would like to do that that has that experience hi Yiga, yes what would their role be like? Oh, is that Mary Blessing talking or is that you? Yeah, I can't see. That's Mary Blessing. No. Oh, Mary Blessing. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what that role would be like. I think um, we have a lot of ideas and we have a doc and that's kind of where we are. <laughs> so we, I was just looking for maybe if someone wanted to help us 
um, figure out how we build this out, um, how we build, you know, build the teams out, um, just to help us get organized, I think would be great. So why, why I was asking is because I know I have um, spoken to a few persons, about three of them, doing the tour guide um, experience. So, and they were project managers and we're not really sure how to get started. So I was hoping to maybe reach out to them and explain more in details what they would be doing. So that was like why I asked. Yeah, I think um, I, would, I would kind of rely on them to tell us what uh what we need to be doing and how we need to organize this if that makes sense uh henrietta go for it and then yiga we'll get to you because i know you had your hand up too hello can you hear me yeah yeah, sure. yeah so um i would like to join the group and um, i've 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 been involved in different um, program, uh, projects. We were not necessarily called project managers, but at least we brought it to fruition. And I'm willing to learn on the way if there's something new I have to um, learn to be able to do this. So I'd like to volunteer to join. Did I spell that right? Yeah, okay. Um, awesome, yes, A plus. You also had your hand up. Did you have a comment? Yes, I, I volunteered to join um, a product manager. So project manager. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> and Mary Blessing, uh, you said you have three folks that have project management experience that are looking for contributions. Did I understand you properly? Yeah. Do you want to include them in this? Uh, I'm just going to, I can't recall their names now, but okay. I know I've had a chance with them as well, so I'm just going to um, pick up their names and ask them. I'll just put, um, you have other suggestions for chaotic. So I was thinking maybe if we did have one or more project managers, we could do like a small meeting to just kind of figure out what the next steps are, if we have like action plans, you know, how we want to how we want to proceed with it in an organized way so that when people because we we're, I feel like we're going to have a lot of folks who want to help us build this out and I think that I want to make sure that it's organized and we can send them to the right place and have a, a good path for them yeah Matt go for it yeah so is this is this about how to like construct the content for the course is that what you're thinking here and is this the onboarding course like for people who are new to open source, just broadly looking to join open source? Uh, I think in my head, I'm, I should have specified, I'm thinking of more about the chaos part. Okay. Um, and it, it could be content, it could be both. I don't know, I don't know. I feel like we would need, we need someone to help us kind of own this and sort it all out so that we're not just like, like randomly working on things and not coordinating together, if that makes sense. Like I know, Sean, you're working on the Moodle stuff, but at some point somebody's going to have to be the one to like run it and maintain it and know yeah. what's going on. Hopefully there'll be a team under that for that. And yeah. so I just want to make sure that we have a group of folks that are helping coordinate all of the efforts. The, the kind, of, kind of what I what I have in mind for that is if we establish how we want it organized and how do we want to present classes then adding classes and putting them in categories becomes a a straightforward one class at a time effort and um, and so the it's really an administration of the content of the course once we have clarity about how we want to organize and present it that that that's that design decision those design decisions will will help to achieve our goals that makes sense so, so the so the, so there's work but um presumably the work is let i believe the work will be less the, the work of creating individual courses will be more than the work of maintaining the website the work of maintaining the course site will be less than maintaining the website if that makes sense yes yes um 
Yes, it does make sense. And I'm also thinking that these folks will help us keep on track um, so that we continue to make forward movement. Because sometimes I know projects, like they just get kind of stuck because people come and go. And so I want this to not be something that, um, you know, get stuck, I guess. So if we have folks that are kind of managing the project and can just kind of like keep it rolling, keep it moving, keep it on plan and help us figure out the plan. Um, exactly. I think it's, it's really great. Um, Henrietta, go for it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't hear most of what Sean said, but to the latter part, I think that I I do agree. And for those of us who are um, volunteering or that will be joining the project managers, if Sean is not done with his work, it will be great if we kind of collaborate with him because it's. I feel it's better, you can better manage something you know, um, you have a fair idea of how it was created and what it was meant for. So maybe rather than, I don't know if the project managers are going to be separate, um, a separate group from what Sean is doing, but it would be great if we um, kind of like collaborate with him since um, he would know much better about um, the entire course on module. And yeah, so you talk, so the work that I'm doing, the way I view it is I'm beginning to create ways that we might present the course and identifying constraints in the platform and effectively giving the group something to talk about and, and I don't want to say hate, but um, let, let the way that it's organized evolve from discussion where we look at a beginning and then we talk about what else we want to be want to be there it's easier than working from a blank slate and was i addressing a completely different point than you were making Ruth? because i feel like i might have been it's not it's not totally out of place i was just um saying that if like what you're saying about it will be um more difficult putting up the individual courses than managing the entire thing. So I feel like if we are maybe more involved in just not not just the management, but maybe not necessarily we have to create, but part of the creation, we might have a better idea of its functionality and then better manage it. I don't know if you get what I mean. Yes. Yeah, I I, I do. I, I yes, I, I understand the difference. And I agree, I agree that there is a distinction managing it is, uh, there's the original sort of setting up the design piece, there's managing the addition of courses so that it's coherent. And then of course, there's the work of developing the courses. And those are, I think, three distinct activities that require management of some degree. Okay, Yiga, you were next with your hand up. Okay, um, so I just wanted to say that I do agree with Harietta and also the last part of what Sean just said, um, you know, so with project management, there's a lot of things that, there's a lot of different branches and stuff and to ensure that, you know, things keep on going for the long term, because it's long term, you know, it's something that we're trying to do for long term. Um, we, I, I think that it's best that we, we get, you know, an idea of the foundational part of it so that um, if issues come up, if there are questions, of course, we're the project managers who were the go-to people, you know, that people would always ask questions and stuff like that. So I, I think that, it would be a nice idea if we're able to um, participate or, you know, understand, you know, what Sean is working on. Sorry, I have a cold. So, yes. Yeah, I'm going to, I have a, I mean, I have a, I have a, there's some very, very beginning stage design decisions and questions that I have. So, and, I, and my intent, my, this is, we're just going to iterate on these ideas each time that we uh, meet here, hopefully not spending a ton of time each time, but. Okay, Matt, you're next. You're muted. I did the hand, but not the mute. I'd like to say thanks to Henrietta Yee and Mary Blessing for 
being willing to take this on. Um, I did put a few things just in that list there that might be helpful to organize thoughts, just in terms of like what management might be here. I also just wanted to point out that we have um, a couple um, chaos uh, community leads in the Balkans and in Latin America, along with Ruth in Africa, who are also working in this space a little bit as well, thinking about courses, at least from a content perspective, that might be um, useful in their specific regions. So I just wanted to put that on your, put that in front of you. Yeah, and just to clarify, I'm not asking for folks to actually do all these things. It's just like helping us get organized and making like a big action plan of what needs to be done so that we yeah. can easily include volunteers. Okay, I just want to make that clear to them too. Like doing we're not saying build this. That. <laughs> right. Like it's like, let's just get a let, like help us get a plan together so that um yeah, we can help bring people in to build it together. Right. Like, this is good because I don't think we've talked about this. Like what are the what are all the parts? Right. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so and I know that we have, you know, project managers here with all this experience and expertise and they're looking for things. So it's like, yes, please help us. Um, okay. you were, oh, sorry, Matt, were you done? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Ruth, you're next. Go for it. Yeah. I was just going to say um, this for Henrietta and Yiga, there's like a, a education Slack channel to you know, because I think Sean also puts like updates on the work on Moodle so we can all collaborate on the, you know, give updates and maybe another meeting. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can join the education faction. I just want to point that out. Yeah, that's yeah, a great I, point. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to, I have a couple of questions. I, I can have one significant question um, for this meeting. And then we can, then I can go from there and start sharing different ways of arranging Moodle. Well, um, what is that question? Um, if if I can share my screen, sure. Real quickly. Um, so with the hosted Moodle uh, version, when you first this is this is something that I I don't like it, but it might just be me. With this, with the Moodle Cloud, the the landing page is always a login page, so you don't get any information about the courses or what's on the site until you create an account and log in. So I don't like that, but maybe it's not. It may not be a deal killer. But I, I thought it was a big enough difference from what I expected that uh, I wanted to to bring that limitation to the group because certainly there are other Moodle hosters out there. Um, I did look into hosting our own, and it's it's a bit of a I think we would have difficulty. There'd be a whole other project management just trying to keep our own site up. Yeah, but, I, don't uh, I don't think we have the bandwidth to do. No. So, so, you know, kind of, I guess, take some time to think about, well, we, are we okay with this? Um, perhaps the link is something that we contextualize uh, on the chaos website so that yeah. all of the things about this are explained there. And then yeah. if they want to join a course, they come here and they have the context. But if they, we, I don't think we want to send people straight here if this is what we, if this is the platform that we use, because this tells them basically nothing. Yeah, we could just have a landing page that we would send to people to first and then say, okay, to join, click here. I think okay. that's pretty simple, yeah. Okay, and uh, with that in mind then, so once you log in, I am Matt German Prey. Uh, How do you, you can, uh, just inter is this for development or taking a course? This is for taking a course. This is like for a user to sign up. So they and, so if you wanted to take a course, even though they're free, you would still have to create an account. Is yes, that, that is correct. Okay. And, and to some extent, that makes sense because you want to be able to track your own courses that you've taken. 
Yeah, I was just curious as to how it worked. Like yeah. we wouldn't just have a universal login and password. We would ask for people to create their own. Yeah, and and I have to uh, figure out. I have to set that part up. But I'm lo so I'm logged in as Matt right now. Matt created this uh, Moodle Cloud account, and there's there's a lot of ways that you can organize things once a user logs in, and the way I organized it, I call this name is subject to um discussion i call the chaos open source center for learning um and we have one course that's been created uh and and i thought that listing your courses would be the most important thing to see at the top but the other possibilities is we could have site news we could have course categories we could have a listing available of available courses um and i i think one way one way to do it is sort of if if it wasn't my courses which sort of assumes that you've already signed up for one and of course the at first users wouldn't have we might put the course categories at the top and then that would guide people to options and categories that we create um that's limiting though as we learned with the with the knowledge management system because what we think are the categories aren't always what other people think are the categories um, there's also, I gotta figure out how to, uh, somewhere there's a search and maybe a, I thought I configured, uh, the search, hang on. And just to be clear, I don't think we need to solve everything. Yeah. 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 I don't need to do this with you, but, <laughs> like, but I feel uh, like yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. That was, that was dumb to jump into the admin oh, screen. You're fine. You're fine. But there's a, yeah, there's, so there's a, also a way to put a course search at the top and the available courses at the top. Um, and they could be listed like that. So that might be a better way to introduce people. Um, site news is, could be things that we do to promote stuff. So it's, um, I would say that uh, available courses or my courses are probably the thing we want at the top of what's logged in. And, and I can, I'll, I can, I will flesh this out a bit more for next week and then put a, I'll, I'll figure out how to make it so that people can log in because uh, I, don't, I don't know if you noticed, but there, there is no way for me to create an account <laughs> on this landing page. Yeah, how, um, how do people create an account? Well, there's, I'm sure I just have to figure out how to can, uh, where that configuration item okay. is. So I'm not, I'm not sweating that that seems like a pretty basic function. So. Um, okay, no worries. Yeah, so I just, uh, that's where, and so I, as, as I make modifications to the, basic ideas and site designs, I can post them either as screenshots with different options or links to try out and, and folks can provide comments and we can kind of get the site organized that way so that it, you know, is presenting our courses the way that we want it to. Okay, fair enough. That's all I got. That awesome. That's what I, I wanted to bring to everyone's attention at this early stage. That's good. Thanks, Sean, for your work there. Yeah, Shame that's right. Um, we, we have other things on the agenda, but we're out of time. So uh, let me just wait. Let me just make sure there's nothing super urgent. I think in one minute you could give the weekly update, CAS weekly update. Yeah, we're moving to monthly. And update. <laughs> <laughs> Because honestly, every week is getting a lot. Um, yeah. We yeah. will still be chaotic of the week, chaotic of the week, and I will still post meeting summaries to Slack as I do in the each channel. So, um, so I think people do. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to post them in discourse anymore. I don't know. It's a lot. Um, and also this, uh, we are just going to be talking about that in community meeting next week. That was brought up this yesterday, and we didn't have time to talk about it, but Zoom has been making changes to their um, policies and it's they're not great. So um, yeah, we're just gonna be talking about what we wanna do as a community. Uh, there are other choices. There are other choices. Oh, Daniel, you have your hand up. Uh, just on the move from weekly to monthly, is that for this DEI group as well or just no. for 
No, it's just a newsletter that I send out every week. Um, and we've been doing it that way for years. And it's just like, I don't know, it's time to change it up a little bit, I think. So, yeah. But this this meeting, um, what I'll do in the working group is just summarize what we talked about today, high level. And then I link to the recording and I link to the minutes. And I put that in every working group. So that, and usually those go in the newsletter also. So that will still happen in Slack. Um, and we do a chaotic of the week where we highlight someone in our community and just talk uh, about them a little bit and celebrate them and thank them for their contributions. So those will still happen weekly as well, but um, all the other stuff's just going to be plopped together monthly. So thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, this part, I guess we'll have to wait till next time and talking about the liaisons, we can wait. Let's do uh, deeper to next week. The only, the only thing about the liaisons that we're out of time, but it, it's just that they we may be doing some metrics development work from liaisons here from the context working groups. It's just that's all I wanted to say. Okay, so I'm not going to here. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Great meeting right. today. Good to see everyone. Yeah. Have a good day, and we'll see, see you next time. Thank you. And good bye to that excited <laughs> young too. person. I the youngest. I'm sad to you. It's okay. Bye. She saw bye, the Moodle, they saw the Moodle design and just went. <laughs> <laughs>